two clicks to turn your Excel file into a Power App. Pretty cool, right? You're thinking, but Shane, if it's that easy, why do we need this big old video? The reason is because, yes, we're going to show the two clicks, but then we're going to talk through the process, right? How well this goes for you is going to depend on how your Excel file is formatted. So there's a bunch of little nuances to do this with your Excel, don't do this with your Excel. And so what I'm going to attempt to do, still in a pretty quick video, is walk you through all the little things you need to know so that you can take advantage of it, or more likely you can spread the love with your users and get them to take advantage of it. But you can say, hey, do this, don't do that. Sound like fun? Well, then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Now, the first thing we need to know is that this feature is rolling out right now. So you might not have it yet. So just in case, if you don't have it, or if your homepage doesn't look like this or some form of this new homepage, you know, the start with data, start with page design stuff, then on your regular homepage, what you want to do is go up to the URL and you're going to, go, you're going to just add the word preview. So make that preview.powerapps environments. So this is how you can get it right now if it hasn't rolled out for you. Okay. Either way, once we've got it, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the Copilot capabilities, but we're going to do it a little bit different. So we're going to go over here to start with data. And so we need to upload an Excel file. So this is the magical option I promised you in the last week's video would show up. There it is. We'll click in there. And so now here we go. So select from our device, our one file. We could drag or drop, but you know, I'm not that fancy. Over here on my desktop, we're going to look for Excel files. And so we're just going to grab this one right here called EMP for employee and say open. So pressing open, that was our first click. Our second click is underneath my face down here at the bottom, create app. Now there's a bunch going on here, but I promise you two clicks. So we're not going to talk about anything that's going on here. We're just going to move my face, click create app. And after a minute and eight seconds, boom, there is our app. Okay. And keep in mind, it takes different amounts of time. Sometimes it goes like 10, sometimes it takes a minute and eight seconds, you know, whatever. So if we were happy with this app, we could literally just save, publish, start sharing it and use the app. Done. Now what really happened? So what really happened here was we took our Excel spreadsheet and we're going to look at Excel spreadsheets in a minute because that's where a lot of the you know challenges come from. But it took our Excel spreadsheet. It said, okay, here's all the data you've got. So it figured out all the columns for us. And then it took and created a table in Dataverse with those columns. And then it populated all the data. So if there had been a thousand rows in my Excel spreadsheet, poof, I would have a Dataverse table now with the same columns and a thousand rows. And then it built an app on top of it. Bingo, bingo. That was it, right? Like I did nothing. Two clicks. We've got the whole app up and running. That's pretty amazing. This is new, the kind of the standard new template that they use for a lot of things. So keep in mind, this template is responsive. You know, over here on the left, this is a gallery. On the right, this is a form. So if you're like, you know, I really don't want to see the, the note field. So what can we do? We go find form one, we get edit fields, and then all the things you know how to do with Power Apps are hold true, right? So we get rid of that. Boom, it's gone. Oh, you know what? I want the gallery to show people's faces. Then we'll change it to the one with an image. And then believe it or not, it even guessed right and figured that out pretty quick. But right, keep in mind, it's all responsive. It's all built in containers. It's all good, right? We're not going to spend any more time customizing this app. But I wanted you to know that this app is here. It has all the capabilities. It's truly what you want. So if we're not going to spend time with that, what I want to spend time with is really talking about what happened there, right? So we said start with data and we said upload an Excel file. And so we selected one from our device. And in our case, we chose the employee file, right? So let's choose that one again. And let's kind of walk through this a little slower instead of just concentrating on two clicks. Okay, so it's pulled it in. Now that it's pulled it in, I'm going to open it over here in Excel. Now, the reason I didn't open it ahead of time or open it while we were waiting on it to load was that you can't have the Excel file open. It's a very common mistake. If you have the Excel file open, we hit import over there, it'll yell at you and you need to close it in Excel. But now that it's imported, now I can open the Excel file and you guys can see this is just a pretty standard Excel file. We got columns of data, rows. Now this particular one is in a table. Here's the good news. You do not have to have the data in a table. We're gonna see that in just a second. We're gonna do one that doesn't have a table. Doesn't matter at all. But mine does be in a table, it works. Now speaking of things it can and can't be, it's well, basically what happens when it says, hey, look at this Excel file. It doesn't let you choose the table or the range or anything like that. It looks at the Excel file, it looks in the first sheet and it finds the first either table or range in that sheet, and then that's what it gives you. So that can be one of those weird nuances. Like if you've got a really complicated Excel with lots of moving parts, it's probably not ideal for this. Ideally, what you would then do is just copy out the one section that you wanted, put that into a new Excel file, and do it, right? Because there's no connection after the import happens. 
So you're just doing that one-off connection. So let's just put it in its own file and like cut down on the guessing game what's going to get pulled in here. But there you go. Normal thing you kind of see. I got some numbers. I got email addresses, links to files, booleans, dates, all of that stuff. So if we go over here and look, what you're going to see is that it went ahead and it analyzed things for me to figure out what would do there, right? So for example, employee record is what it decided to name my table for my app. If you were to look through that one, that one was named EMP. So it's it's using the Copilot's AI to analyze the data to figure out what to name things. So you're going to see different names. If you don't like what it did, maybe you don't like employee record, you'd be like employee video, like me. And I'll put delete, so I remember to delete it later. And then we can save that. Also notice here you could change any of the other pieces. You could change what the primary column was if it got that wrong. And then under advanced options, this is where it's putting in the schema. So you can see this is actually the third time I've done this table and it's named the same thing all three times. Kind of cool. And so it just keeps appending a new number here. So that way the schemas don't, it doesn't mess with the other table. So we can say save. So then there I have a new table property. We also have row ownership. So if you want to change the way the security worked for this particular one, we're not going to get into permissions, but know that you can set your dataverse permissions for this particular table right off the bat here. Over on the right, we can control whether or not the first row had column headers. So really another nice thing about this, that we'll try here in a second, is that it, if you don't have column headers, it will decide and make up column headers for you. So it can figure those out. And if you don't like them, if you're like, oh, I really wish that wasn't first name, edit column. And we could just call that first. We get rid of the word name. No big deal. Update. There you go. Also look over here. So it said, hey, you know what? That favorite color. I noticed that you basically have three or four different fields over and over again. So if we say edit column, look at that. It went ahead and pulled in all the different values. And so it set those as choice and set as a choice column. That's pretty cool, right? Like it, it figured that out. We didn't do nothing. That got all figured out on its own. We could modify the choices now. If you knew that, you know, you really, everybody always wished that uh, uh, neon had been a color, just throw it in there. Update, no big deal. It is in there, right? It did the same thing for department, higher dates. So right now you can see it's a date and time. Don't want it to be a date and time, right? Higher dates, just a date. Change the format to date. Update that. Good at their job is a what I would consider a Boolean, but right, we know in Dataverse parlance, that is a yes or no. Oh, parlance, listen to me. Uh, so it's already there. Um, for face, it set that column type as a URL. Now there's some weirdness there. It didn't actually get all of those right because some of them had um, description text and some didn't. So I would need to fix that up. So there's a column that, you know, it could have done differently. Age is number, hourly wage. When I hadn't figured out that was currency. An employee email is an email field. So kind of neat stuff, right? Like it, it worked out a lot of this for us. And if you're like, you know, I just really don't like something. Remember, you can edit the column. That's, that's one of the key things. You have that control, that capability to do it. And at this point, we just hit create app. So we're not going to keep creating the app over and over again. But that's the first thing I want you to understand is, you know, the interface is pretty straightforward. Also keep in mind, if you have lots and lots of rows of data, so you know if you had 20 or 1,000 rows, it's only going to show you the first 20, but it's going to import all 1,000 or 10,000. I don't know if it has an upper limit at this point, but you know all the large ones I've tried so far have worked just fine. So right, nice to know there, but just remember, it's only going to show you the first 20, which is more than enough. Speaking of Excel, let's just go back over here real quick. Let's make ourselves a brand new one just so we can really see what this will look like. And so let's throw in some names here. So hang on, I'll type in a bunch of names. And then we'll throw in some ages and we'll just throw in some statuses. Okay, so yeah, we just typed in some data. You know what? We're even going to grab this data. Let's control exit. And let's just kind of throw it over here. All right? I would typically work from A1, but we're going to throw it right here. So now we've done it, let's save this file. So we'll say file and save. We'll call them video people. I know, very fancy name. And we'll save that. Okay, so now we've saved it. Obviously, we want to close it so we don't mess up. And so if we go back over here, we'll just cancel out of this. Start with data again. Upload your file. Select from device. There's video people. And so now we'll say open. Now look at that. It pulled it in. It said, hey, these are the things. Now, if you notice right away, though, it's like, hey, your first row is column headers. Well, we didn't want that, right? We don't want Shane as a header. I mean, it's kind of a cool header. But we're going to change this and turn it off. And so look at that. 
I just turned it off and instantly it's like, hey, that's a name column, that's an age column, and then that is a employment status column, and it was a choice column, right? And if we look at the choices, part-time, full-time. That to me is wild, right? Like that's the power of the large language model that is Copilot, you know, being in here. So it analyzed the data and it, it made a decision around what that would be. Notice in our Excel, right, we did not do a table. We did not even put it at A1. We just kind of threw it in there and it worked fine. <laughs> that's, that's actually the first time I tried that. Of course, I would try it live with you guys, but it worked. Very cool. Now let's go over here to Excel. Another one I want to look at. So here's a really bad example. I made this one earlier today when I was messing around and I kept it because I wanted you to see it. So in this case, you can see I've got some data up here. I've got slightly different data down here, all crammed on one sheet. Let's see what happens if this is what you choose to do. So this is a different name, two sheets, all right? So let's close this so we can open or import it. We'll cancel, select from our device. And we can drag and drop. I just, I'm not a drag and dropping person, but you absolutely can. We'll go to desktop. And so then there's that weird name we did. So what you're gonna see this time is it's gonna be a train wreck. But I'm not gonna blame Copilot for this because the train wreck was my Excel file that I thought it would magically fix for us. It doesn't, right? So it's like, hey, I don't know what you're doing here, Shane. So it does know all the rows are here. And let's just go ahead and open the Excel file back up so we can kind of compare and contrast real quick. But so here you can see that, look, we've got all this is blank. We got all of these blank rows in between. We've got some different headers and stuff. It mimicked exactly that. There's all the blank rows. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to get rid of these from this interface. So we would have to either go fix our Excel, the preferred answer, or we could delete them once we got over in the Power App. But we do have, you know, all these blank rows here. We've got this weird column. You know, you also notice, like, for example, it had to make price a number column. But Shane, why didn't it make it a currency? Because yes, these two are currency. Yes, these are blank. But then this one says last name, young, right, and all these things. So unfortunately, because we structure our Excel really poorly, we get a really poor result here. So please don't blame Copilot for these type of things. So in this instance, if I'm like, hey, I wanted to appify just, you know, this section here, then what I would have encouraged you to do is go ahead and put this on, create a new workbook, copy this data, paste it over there, and then make it from that. Also keep in mind that like this one, there's a bunch of data on sheet two. It doesn't look on sheet two, period, never, doesn't look, it's not there. So don't you know let anything about sheet two confuse you here. It's gonna grab the first sheet and then it's going to find the first range. And in this case, this was the first range, or I guess it was actually, this was the first range and it went and did. I've also seen some, you know, things that you might not like, like I've done this and say that you come in here. So if we didn't have all this, let's just get rid of this. But right now, you know, like in the quest to, to format this column, I did this and I'm like, hey, format all those as currency. So I did that. If I import this spreadsheet now, what's going to happen? Well, let's just close it. So we'll close this, we'll go here, we'll say back. We even discard my table. Upload an Excel file again, select that same file again, say open. And so yes, it pulled it in, right? Look, notice name, price is correct, date is correct, email is correct. So it got all the columns right this time because it, it found the right stuff. But because I formatted all these rows below with that currency setting, Excel saw that they had been changed, or I guess Copilot saw they had been modified in Excel, they had settings on them. So these are a bunch of blank rows. So once again, you'd have to ask yourself, like, is it easier to go fix the Excel? So I'd probably just go back to Excel, delete out those rows, and then do the import again. Or once we get into Dataverse, we could delete all this. So totally up to you, but like if we go ahead, let's just go ahead, look, for the last time, let's create an app from this. Okay, and that time it created in 48 seconds. Who knows, right? But here you can see all the blank rows. We could just hit play though. And then we you know we could click on this row delete it, you know, use their lovely little interface to, to clean up all their stuff. Or would I be more inclined to remember, this is just Dataverse. What's stopping me from going over here and like, hey, product sales, say edit data. This brings up the standard Dataverse experience. And so then now, you know, we can get in here, delete all these uh, fields, and then say delete these eight records, gone. Much faster way to clean up. But right, it's just Dataverse. So this is a Dataverse table. I can still edit it. I can add columns, remove columns. You can still work with it. There's nothing special at this point. It just used Copilot to make our jobs easier. Now also just remember that this is all very brand new, right? Like this is all still in preview. 
Uh, Microsoft's rolled this out so we can start to try it out. There are a bunch of little nuanced things that you might notice, but they are on those. They are working on them. They're fixing them as fast as they can. So, you know, please try it, use it, and learn it well enough, right? Because if you're one of my regular viewers, you're like, hey, I already know all this stuff. You do, but you've got hundreds, thousands, millions of, you know, makers that look up to you for stuff. And so you need to be able to help them and show them how this is the fastest way for them to take their Excel spreadsheet and turn it into a power app. Another thing you might be thinking is, well, Shane, isn't this all premium now? It absolutely is, right? It's built on top of Dataverse, so the app it makes would be premium. No, you cannot connect it to SharePoint or any other data source today, right? You can't use the wizard to, you know, do an import like that. There's other ways to get SharePoint data in and build off of there, or as we showed in the other video, you know, you can use the new wizard with SharePoint to just work against your existing SharePoint list. There's options. But this is really the long-term solution, right? More and more, we need to be looking at Dataverse as our number one data source. And this is a really fast way to go from Excel, which is the world's worst data source, into Dataverse, which is Power App's best data source. So, yep, it is premium, but man, what they get for it is probably worth it in the grand scheme of things. Questions, comments, other things that you'd like to see me do, leave them below. Also, keep in mind, right, this week, Microsoft Build is rolling out, so... I got another cool video again tomorrow, more build stuff that you'll enjoy. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.